How all too familiar is this scene for you? We wake up in a state of constant distractions, notifications on our phone, we strap on a watch, which is gonna give us more notifications, ultimately taking up a lot of unnecessary time throughout our day. Minimalist minimalism, this can mean different things to different people, but you need to understand what it represents. We spend so much money buying things. We spend time consuming things that we want now. Would you rather live in a mansion by yourself or live in a shack with someone you love? So today we're gonna to go through what minimalism means to me and how I'm adopting it to my lifestyle. All right, so why am I about to cut my hair? Is this really minimalism? No, but what this is, is a distraction for me. It's a small distraction. Every morning I wake up, if I go one wheeling and I have to wear my helmet, if I go paddle boarding, it's a small distraction. So I'm gonna eliminate this out of my life because ultimately I don't really care that much about my hair and it's gonna make my life that much easier to focus on other better things. Let's do it. All right, now that we got that out of the way, back to the video. So everyone gets caught up in the churn and burn. We go to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee, when instead, if we eliminate these small distractions in aggregate, we have a lot more free time. We can go enjoy mornings. We can spend time on the beach, going for walks, spending time with the people that matter in our lives, focusing on things that are truly important. Do you wanna to go to your local Starbucks or do you wanna go buy some fresh beans and have time to grind your own coffee in the morning, which is gonna taste a lot better and ultimately be cheaper? By eliminating distractions, you can spend time on the things that are important to you. We ultimately live in a world where we want things now. We want things today. Amazon Prime has shown us that we can't wait. We don't wanna wait. We want things as soon as we order them. I ask you, next time you place an order, think about, can I wait a few days for this? Do I really need this? Don't fall into the trap. So I'm with you. I've fell victim to this trap many times. The desire to get something today, the adrenaline rush of shopping online, pressing checkout, and knowing that you'll have something soon. However, it's time to take a step back. Focus on what are distractions in life. By having less, you can focus on the really valuable things. For me, I wanna focus more on my craft as filmmaking, more YouTube. I need to get rid of my TV. That doesn't mean completely getting rid of it. What that means is maybe moving it to a different part of my space. So what I'm gonna to do today is rearrange my space. I'm gonna go through my closets and I'm gonna lay out everything I don't need in the middle of the room. And I'm gonna figure out what is the most effective layout to work on my craft. I ask you, have you ever had a giant breakthrough while you were watching TV? Probably not. So figure out what's important to you, rearrange your space, so that way you can focus on what you desire, what you wanna go after. It's still there if you need it, but it's not the center point of the room like my TV is right now. So just like many of you, I've got stuff in my closet that's been in here forever. There's sentimental value. It's something from high school. It's something from college. It's something from a trip. Ultimately, you've got to ask yourself, do you really need the physical thing or do you want the memory? Can you hold on to the memory? So while I love everything in this box, I've had to ask myself, I see it once a year. Every time I move is really when I open this box or take a look at these items. It's taking up space. Yes, I have memories. I have great times with some of this. It goes all the way back to my high school ages. However, do I really need it? I have the memories. I have the joy of these experiences. There are certain things like family heirlooms, art, that may carry certain intrinsic value that you can't replace and you need to hold on to those. But ask yourself, are the things just sitting in your closet really that valuable if you're not even looking at them? Enjoy the memories, enjoy the time you had with them, but you don't necessarily need to have them in the physical presence. So another big thing you can focus on then is redundancies. How many cell phones do you have? Are you holding on to old ones? How many forms of the same transportation do you have? How many cups do you have? How many cameras do you have? These are all things that as you figure out you have more than you need, you can sell them. It's less to maintain, it's less to go stale, it's less to focus on. You can get very good with a single camera and know it in and out instead of having to learn a ton of different cameras. You can make money and put it towards debt, put it towards something else more important, put it in your savings because you've realized you don't need everything you have. I'm guilty of this myself, as you can see, so this is something I really wanna work on moving forward. I've realized that my channel by its very nature in some essence really pushes this forward. Consumerism, buying, 
what I want to do with this channel, what I hope to do is actually provide you meaningful info about products. So when you need something, when you find something is gonna be really important to you, you can go ahead and make that purchase decision. It doesn't mean you should go out there and buy everything I review. That's never been my intention. That's not what I wanna convey. So moving forward, I'm gonna make sure I'm only reviewing very important products that I think are gonna solve a problem that ultimately will help you decide, can you live with it or can you live without it? So by eliminating all these distractions in our lives, we can do the things that make us healthier, that we enjoy, like cooking in the morning. By eliminating certain distractions in my life, I was able to spend more time focusing on being healthy, eating things I enjoy, and simply cooking, which can be a bit meditating in its own right. My dog also likes this food. So how many of you have just been simply filling the space you live in? I know I'm guilty of that. So when I started off in a studio, I made sure I had a couch, I had a bed, I had a TV. That was about it. Then you move into a one bedroom. You start to get dressers, you start to get nightstands, you start to get more furniture. Then you move into a one bedroom with a garage. The garage starts to fill up with things that you never use. It's a place to store things. Then you move into a two bedroom. I got to the point I was filling space for no reason. I didn't necessarily need everything I had, but I felt like it was empty without it. Live with the emptiness, enjoy the emptiness, enjoy the space. It's a lot easier to think and focus when you don't have as much to clean, when you don't have as much to worry about. Only fill the space if it's something that you really are going to use. So while that may seem a little extreme to some of you out there, I had to do this. I had to go through all my stuff and just get rid of what I knew I didn't use. It was something I was holding on to for a long time, just maybe I'll need it in the distant future, but I didn't have an immediate need. And honestly, some of this I've just not touched in a long time. So I'm gonna donate what I can, I'm gonna sell some of it, and then the rest, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to throw away. I challenge you to do the same, go through your stuff, what do you not need? For example, all those lens boxes, don't worry, those were empty. I hold on to those because you can get an extra 10 to $15 when you trade in your gear. I'd rather have the empty space, not have to haul those around everywhere, not have them taking up space in my closet. So that's something that I felt okay letting go of. Now I have the fun process of going through all this and sorting it, cleaning it up a bit. What am I gonna donate, sell, and get rid of? So I challenge you guys to do the same, walk through your apartment, walk through your house, figure out what you can and cannot live without. Organize it, start off small, maybe go through today, remove one or two things, go through a week from now, what have you touched then, so on and so forth. So that being said, I'm gonna do that now. We're also gonna rearrange the space while I'm at it, get this a little bit more creative, make the TV not the center point. I'll see you guys in a bit. And welcome to the new space. So while it's not too foundationally different, yes, there's still the TV, it's no longer the center of attention. Depending on where you're sitting, it's very conversational. When I have people over, we can talk to one another. As well, the couch actually faces towards my studio, and from the studio itself, I can't see the TV because of the angle of it. So overall, this is gonna have me looking outside a lot more, thinking a lot more, reading a lot more, less distractions, more focus on the things I need to achieve. So I challenge you to do the same, guys. If you like this video, I know it was very different than my normal ones. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know any questions in the comments section below. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you on the next one.